Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I'm going to explain how to create parametric designs using Blender in the Home Builder add-on. Now this will be a slightly more advanced video than I typically create, but the basics of this are very easy to understand, and once you learn how this works, you're going to instantly level up your ability to create parametric designs quickly. Now we're going to be creating this simple elevation of cabinets, but you'll notice when I adjust the wall length, all of the cabinets will properly adjust to fill that wall. We're also going to add in a couple of prompts to this wall here to where we can adjust the tall cabinet width independently and then this middle base cabinet width. And again, all of the products are going to adjust to fill the remaining space. Now you're going to find that this is not very difficult to do and we're going to be using a feature in Blender called drivers. And once you learn the basics of these concepts, this will help you out in a lot of other areas when working with Blender. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start out by drawing a few walls here. I'll click on the draw wall command, and I'm just going to create a simple U-shape room here. And then we'll go ahead and add some cabinets to this. So we'll go to our product library. And here in the cabinet category, I'm going to put in a two-door tall cabinet, drawer cabinet, a door drawer, put in another drawer cabinet, and then we'll add in a couple two-door upper cabinets next to the tall. And so the goal is to make these cabinets parametrically fill the wall that they're on. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add in a simple driver. So let's say that we want to make it to where when we change the length of this wall, our third wall automatically adjusts to match the first wall. And so the way that we can do that is here, if we go to the item tab, I'm going to collapse the transform panel. Here in the assembly panel, this shows us the information for the selected assembly, which in this case is this wall three. And everything in Home Builder is built on assemblies. So every single one of these walls is an assembly and then every single part and every single cabinet is an assembly and sometimes they're nested together. And so here if we select on wall three, you'll notice when we change the X dimension that changes the length of the wall. And so this is the property that we want to drive. And so the way we add a driver is by going to the logic tab here and then we can select the property that we want to add the driver to, which in this case is dimension X. We can see that same property right here and to add a driver. We right click select add driver and this interface will come up. We don't need it because all of the interface elements are displayed here in the sidebar. And here, this value is the expression. This is the formula that we can use to determine what this property is going to evaluate to. And then below that, we have all of the drivers that are used in this formula. And by default, Blender adds in a dummy formula and a dummy variable that we don't need at all. So we're just going to go and delete the variable that Blender adds, and we're going to get our own variables. But the property next to this is where we're going to be getting the variables from. And since we want to get the X dimension of our first wall here, if we use this eyedropper and select on the first wall, when we click this get variables button, it's going to be getting variables from this assembly. So when we click on this, what we want to do is we want to get the X dimension. So we'll go and get this variable and click OK. And at some point, Blender is going to evaluate the expression, which since Blender just has a dummy expression in there, it's going to evaluate to zero. But that's OK, because we're going to take this variable here and we're just going to type Control C to copy that variable name. We're going to go and type Control V to paste it in the expression. And once we hit enter, now we're using this variable to drive the X dimension of our third wall. So here, if we change the length of our first wall, you'll notice that it's always going to match. So let's go ahead and add some drivers to these cabinets here. But before we do that, we want to add in some prompts that will allow us to change the width of this tall cabinet and the middle base cabinet here. So let's go ahead and go to the prompts of wall two. And here, if we click on add prompt, this is going to be a distance value. We're going to type in tall cabinet width. We'll click OK. I'm just going to give it a default value for right now of 36. And we're going to add in another prompt. And we're going to call this middle base cabinet width. And click OK. And again, we'll give it a default value of 36. And so now we want this tall cabinet. We want the width of this tall cabinet to look to this prompt to determine what its width value is going to be. And so here, if we select on a part of this tall unit, it's going to show us the assembly for the selected part. But since this part is nested within several other assemblies, we need to move up the hierarchy until we get to the top level cabinet assembly. So here, if we select this option to select the parent assembly, you can see that moves up one level, which is the doors assembly, which isn't the top level yet. So we'll go one more. This is the carcass. And there's one more above that, which is the tall two door. And if we're ever not sure if we go to the main options and adjust the dimensions here, we should see the width of that cabinet adjust. 
And so we're gonna do the same thing that we do with the wall. We're gonna to go to the logic tab here for the X dimension of that cabinet. We're gonna right click, add in a driver. We don't need the variable that Blender gives us. So we're gonna go ahead and get the variable from wall two because that's where we added the prompts. So we'll go ahead and just delete that. We'll use the eyedropper, select wall two, get variables. And now we'll notice that we have a couple extra prompts that we added that we can access to use them as a variable. So I'm gonna get the tall cabinet width. So I'll just add that, click okay. And again, at some point, Blender is gonna evaluate that, which will return zero, but we just go ahead and copy this variable, paste it in the expression, hit enter, and there we go. So now if we go to the prompts of wall two, we can adjust the value here, and that's gonna adjust the width of our tall unit. So now we're gonna do the same thing for this door drawer unit here. And another way to get access to the assembly. So right now wall two is the active assembly. And if we go to the objects, we can see all of the objects that are parented to this assembly. And so here we have this base two door, two drawer. And if I click on that, that sets that to be the active assembly. And so you'll notice if we change the width of that, that's gonna adjust that cabinet there. So we'll go to the logic tab here. We'll do the same thing. We'll right click, add a driver, get rid of this variable and we'll get the middle base cabinet width, click OK, and then we'll copy that variable into our expression. And there we have it. So now if we go to the prompts, now we have the middle base cabinet width that we can adjust and the tall cabinet width. So now we wanna add a driver to our other drawer cabinets here, but we don't have a prompt to control the width of that. We want these cabinets to take up the remaining space based on the length of the wall and the tall cabinet width and middle base cabinet width. And so what we'll do is we'll go to our objects here. We'll select on our base drawer cabinet. And again, if you want to verify, you can check the X dimension to see what cabinet you're working with. And here we'll go to our logic tab. We'll right click, we'll add a driver and we're going to be getting the variables from wall two. And again, we'll delete the variable that we don't need. And so we're going to need the X dimension, which this is going to be the length of wall two. And we're also going to need the tall cabinet width and middle base cabinet width. So we'll add those and click OK. And so now we have three variables that we can work with. So first, if you wanted to change the name of these variables, you can. Here, if I just type in wall length, you just want to make sure that your variable doesn't have any spaces in it. So you'll use underscores. And here, let me also just make this a little bit bigger so you can kind of see this a bit better. So here, I'm going to take wall length. I'm going to copy this and put it in the X dimension here. And so you'll notice that now this cabinet is going to be the exact length of this wall because that's what it's looking to. So we want to deduct the tall cabinet width. So we'll use that and we'll use the minus sign. All right, so that'll deduct the tall cabinet width. And then we want to deduct the middle base cabinet width. And so now, since we have two cabinets on here, we need to divide this expression by two. And here, if we just type in divide by two, that's not going to evaluate correctly because due to order of operations, multiplication and division are going to happen before addition and subtraction. And so what we need to do is we need to put this whole expression in parentheses and then have the divide by two. So once we do that, it's going to evaluate correctly, but we also need to assign this formula to this cabinet as well. And this is easy to do here. If we just right click, we can copy this driver here. We'll select on this cabinet and then again we'll move up the hierarchy until we get to the base drawer and then we'll right click and then we'll paste that driver. And so now all of our base cabinets and tall cabinets are going to fill that wall. So here if we select on our wall you'll notice that we can adjust the length of this and if we wanted to change the tall cabinet width we could do that and the middle base cabinet width will adjust and the two drawer units are going to take up the remaining space. So now it's going to do the same thing for our two door upper cabinets. I'm going to select this. We'll go ahead and move up the hierarchy here. And here in the logic tab, we'll go ahead and right click, add in a driver. We're going to still be getting variables from the wall to delete the variable we don't need. And we're going to get the X dimension, the length of wall two. And then all we need is the tall cabinet width because these upper cabinets don't interfere with the middle base cabinet that we have. So we'll go ahead and add this variable and we'll do the same thing. We'll take the length of our wall and then we'll deduct the tall cabinet width. So minus tall cabinet width. And of course, since there's two cabinets, we need to divide this by two. So we'll put this formula here in parentheses and then use the divide by two 
And now it's evaluating correctly, but we need to copy this formula to this cabinet as well. So we'll right click, copy this driver, select on the other cabinet, move up the hierarchy till we get to the top level assembly, and then right click and paste that driver. And so now everything is working correctly here. If we adjust the length of this wall, you can see all the cabinets are going to fill up that remaining space. And of course, now we have these handy controls to where we can adjust just the cabinets that we wanted to. And this would come in helpful. Let's say we were designing a room for a client and we didn't know the exact wall length for the project, but we knew what type of cabinets we needed to include. And so what we can do is we can add drivers to them. That way, when we get the verified wall length dimension, we can just come in here and change this one property to the exact size of that wall. We don't need to adjust the location or sizes of any of the individual cabinets as we set up the formulas to do so for us. Now, there are a lot of other uses for drivers. This is really just a simple example, but this is all I really wanted to show in this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this and I'll see you in the next one.